from Ecoise here. So we're at the end of April and we've been looking at different periods of flowering and a lot of the things that seem to be flowering before are often yellow. This is just my observation but it seems like a lot of the things that are flowering now are white and quite a lot of plants that are flowering now are in the rose family, the rosaceae, which is my surname, I'm Adam Rose, so I feel an affinity to this group. This one here, this one here is a small, uh, well it's a shrub. In England they grow a lot of hedges from this plant and it's called, in English it's called um, hawthorn, uh, bianco spino in, Ita in Italian or crataegus monogena in Latin. And if you look at the flowers, you'll see they look like baby roses. They've got five petals and beautiful stamens, and it's just a beautiful classical rose shape. But a lot of rose fat, and these are the leaves here, kind of beautiful shaped leaves. Nice color, they've got these beautiful kind of, there's a lot of different colors in this green because often people talk about green. And in English, we don't have many words to describe green but there's if you look carefully at nature and especially in the world of plants there are so many different kinds of green different tones different hues of green and if you imagine if you're going to paint greens you know some greens have got a lot of blue in it some greens like this bit here if you look it's got kind of orange in it it's green but these young leaves have kind of got quite a lot of orange going on in there some greens have a lot of grey in there, some greens got a yellowy colour, some greens have got a lot of red in there, there's a lot of different colours. So those of you who like painting, you know, and people that are good artists know how to notice the different colours, especially in like green is one colour, but there's many, many hues or different tones of that. And you could try mixing up paints to try getting exactly the right colour. So this is hawthorn and it's got a really strange smell. I quite like it because it reminds me of my home country of England, but it smells a bit like cat's pee. It's got a really strong kind of stinky smell. The insects love it. This is insect pollinated. So a lot of it's advertising itself with its smell and with these showy flowers. And a lot of the insects come in about end of August, it starts making berries that are that are reddish and have been used as food they're quite sweet if you dry them and you can kind of make a paste out of them and then dry the paste it's like a fruit loop or whatever that stuff's called you know it's kind of nice you can dry it out and it's kind of nice used as a medicine it's it's a really cool plant and in english it's also got a name um mayflower is it called the mayflower i think it's called mayflower if you look at this hawthorn, this is another hawthorn, and this has got a beautiful pinky flower. Look at the colour of this. The flowers are slightly smaller than the others. They're beautiful pinky flowers. Hawthorn in English was also called Mayflower because it flowers. Now is the end of April, but it, I guess before would have flowered at the beginning of May, was pretty much now. And I think this is associated also with May the 1st which was a Celtic festival where people used to dance around a maypole, which I believe was made out of this, a, a, a hawthorn. So there's a lot of legends and myths associated with this plant. Maybe you could research what some of them are. And even if it's, you make up some legends, it's kind of cool, like why does the hawthorn smell of cat's pee? I always wonder why. It could be a scientific explanation there probably is, but you could also make up your own explanation of what the story is. You know, what's the story? Why does hawthorn smell a cat's pee? The smell of the flower, because it does. It's got a strong smell. You can see, you can find this plant quite often in gardens. Also, there's many varieties of plants in gardens, and there's a North American species. There's two European species. This is Monogyna, Crataegus Monogyna, and it's got the the intraspecific variation. There's a diversity between this one and this one here. As you can see, this is more of a white. So they're different. They're the same species, but they're genetically different. There's some difference between them, which is really important for evolution and important because it's 
stops things being boring. You know, things are different. So, Hawthorne. Let's go and look at another rose family. It's just over here. And here's another member of the rose family that you can recognize it's a rose. It's a wild dog rose, Rosa canina. And you see it's got that beautiful color, slightly pink color, and again, the same five petals. And if you look carefully, I'm gonna pull off one of these petals here. So it's a really cool thing. It's like a little heart, look at that, little heart. And this has got a nice smell. Um, not smelling of cat's pee so much, but I wonder why it's called Rosa Canina, dog rose. I wonder what the connection with dog rose is. You could research that. And if you see, there's rose beetles on it. If you look here, these beetles, a, they're all over this plant, live on this plant. And that's why you know, the, the roses that are in your garden originate from a number of wild species, probably not this one, but other uh, species from Central and Western Asia mostly. But this is similar to some of the roses you will have in your, fam in your garden. And as you know, a lot of them have beautiful scent and are used in, still used in perfume making, and making rose water that's used in perfumery and used in culinary stuff like for cooking with and stuff and uses a kind of for celebrations and for activities sacred activities rose water is a cleansing beautiful stuff that's not this particular rose it's another one probably the one from damascus anyway here it is the, the wild dog rose and it climbs you see it's got these amazing hooks uh, so you hear it, they're like cat's claws. Look at that. Look at these claws here, which it uses. We talked before a little bit about climbing plants. So this plant literally uses its claws to climb up. And those claws, if they catch you, those, those spines are pretty mean. You don't want to get caught up in the dog rose thicket. Anyway, let's go and look at another rose family plant. And here's another rose family plant plant that's flowering now. These little beautiful rose shaped flowers with a yellow inside are wild strawberries and they're carpeting this whole area. You can see with these trifoliate leaves, these leaves with the three leaves, three little leaflets on it. And these will turn into strawberries within about a month. Wild strawberries that are really good eating. Again, remember, check that you know what you're doing if you're going to eat anything because some things that look like it could be poisonous but there's so many I mean imagine roses a lot of them you know we looked already we've looked at the hawthorn that's like a small tree or a shrub a woody thing and we looked at the dog rose that's a climbing shrub and now we're looking at this it's a herbaceous thing and they're, they're in the same family and the way that they're classified in the same family is because of the because of the shape of the flowers and the, the structure and the anatomy of the flowers is how people originally classified things into different families. So this is the wild strawberry, another rose. Here's another wild rose and this is a tree. And it's one we looked at a month or a bit more than a month ago when it was flowering with the white flowers, a wild cherry tree. And as you see here, the wild cherries have set and they're making the fruit. So in a few weeks, with the right conditions they'll be ready and we'll be picking them. And here's another rose. This is a cultivated rose. So this is one you'd find in a garden. This is a shrub rose. And you find roses in traditional gardens for the for thousands of years, whether it's in the Middle East, whether it's in Persia, whether it's in India, whether it's in Europe, and of course places where those people have gone, like now America or Australia or something. But roses have been bred and cultivated for having lots of different varieties. You have different kinds, like tea roses, shrub roses, and hybrid roses, and all the rest. And they have different colors, different size flowers, and many different kinds of perfumes. Um, roses in different cultures often represent, are a symbol that represent love. So you find them in a lot of different poetry from the Middle East, and from Persia, from India, from Europe. You'll keep coming across roses and how they're a symbol of love. And maybe you can do a bit of research and find out what roses represent and find some nice poetry. Maybe you can even write some poems yourself about the smell of the rose or the way that roses look. 
As you know, a bunch of roses is a very romantic symbol that's often given to a, by, by a man to a woman or by a woman to a woman or, a man or whatever it is, whoever. It's a romantic thing. Roses represent romance and beauty. So, check it out for yourself. Roses and romance. <laughs>